Captain's log. Stardate 192.168.1.8. I nearly called it a dot one again. I have a confession for all those people watching at the moment. Unfortunately, during the audio recording of this segment, I uh, didn't manage to capture my science officer's audio. Science officer ZTech, how are you doing? Captain, I'm trying to sleep here. Please, not now. But we can't sleep. I need to re-record all the footage we did. We just lost. Ah. <laughs> so I want to start with explaining what is going on in the background that we see right now. I am obviously very excited about the fact that we need to build a wall, but my science officer is impressing upon me the need to upgrade all the furnaces, thus stealing all of my stone that I wanted to put in the, the in the defences. And I've got to say, science officer, I am mighty upset about this. This happened already. Okay. okay. We were also talking about how fire doesn't seem to exist on this planet, apart from in the furnaces. Every time I tried to set a fire outside, it didn't stay. All the wood just kind of disappeared. I, I rubbed hard, it didn't work. I'm not sure what, el what else we're supposed to do. I don't know, let me just check something. So, I think I'm awake. I'm awake now. You're awake now. Welcome, science officer. According to, I think the research is that we have to actually discover fire for some reason. Have we not discovered fire? Has Prometheus not touched us yet? Oh, I think we can manufacture flamethrowers later. Not sure, but... So what we're saying is we're actually m missing the method for making fire, not for fire its actual self. And that that, that no. brings, us, brings us down to a, a very interesting and tenuous connection here. So... Fire is dangerous. Yes. <laughs> and at some point, we uh, we ourselves maybe, but at some point there is going to be an emergence of an AI uh, intelligence, if we say. Whether we know that we're bringing it forth or whether it spontaneously erupts out of some self-improving code, at some point we're going to be uh, dealing with a... A childlike intelligence, shall we say? A, uh, a, 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 a nucleus of consciousness that is trying to ask about the world around and learn. How well, do we teach this new new being about the, the complicated matters in life? For instance, if it's like, under what circumstances is it right to kill? And let's be honest, nobody wants to have this talk with the AI because you get it wrong, it's going to blow up in your face. Wait, we had this conversation. What? <laughs> okay, so... I think... So, it's... Uh, hmm. When is it right to kill? Well, not so much when is it right to kill. If we have decided when it's right to kill, and, and I believe we, we actually did figure out how... Not, not, not when it is okay to kill, but when it is morally grey enough for it to happen. How do you go about instilling these ideas into the new AI? I mean, which human are you going to sit in front of an AI to teach? Or how are you going to go about making a program that teaches? You don't do any of those things. You don't get a single human to teach it. You let it see humanity as it is. Are, are you suggesting that this brand new AI, that we expose it to everything we can all at once? Yeah. I am suggesting that because if you do expose it to everything, it will show us that we are not hiding and we are proud of our own creation. Do, do you not feel there is a, a fair degree of risk in that? in that plan uh, if you, if you there, show everything then you're there was risk when we were creating the nuclear weapons there was risk that the other countries will do it before us and use it for I mean Germany or Japan mm. stating World War 2 just that they would do it first and make more damage than good that, well, it's never good to drop a nuke I mean it's still killing lives innocent lives and civilians that had no part in that war, but it's to stop the maniacs in power at that point, for a moment. To stop uh, the greater evil. Uh, to kill evil, you need evil. And that's the problem. 
to kill evil, you need evil. I mean, some some would argue, uh, and I, I'm going to pull back from, I don't know, what, 16th century knowledge, that the the righteous good man is the person that is required to kill evil. D- like, is... is what the, is good? Well, this is this is the question I was about to ask. Is the the righteousness the the vengeance the 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 feeling of stopping bad bad in and of itself? If like say that a terrorist had set himself on fire and went running inside a uh, into an airport, uh, screaming about whichever god he chooses to scream about, and then one of the plucky locals walks up, punches the guy in the face, and like beats him pr- pretty much to death. Is that acceptable? Depends on the society at that moment. But depends on society at that moment. Oh, see, so yeah, that, that's the problem with this trying to teach an AI uh, ethics is, is is that from the human point of view, it changes all the time. Like we have, I mean, I, I would say a, a, an eighty-year shelf life, something like that. Like, and and after that eighty years, you can almost guarantee that a good twenty-five percent of the ethics and the moral values that you were brought into the world with have changed. So here is the problem. A company that digs oil does it for money. Yes. But if if it doesn't, if somebody needs to get the oil, unfortunately, the society at that moment that we were talking about after the Second World War and after all of that situation and the great of beginning AI, of the information age. Yeah. So you still need the oil to power the industry that will provide electricity or transportation, so is it okay to dr- uh, drill oil if it is gonna give us the ability to do a heart transplant? Do the ends justify the means? Now this is a question indeed. I think they do. You think they do? I, I think up to a certain point they do. Uh, let, let's take the, the classic um, science fiction story iRobot where the 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 computer the AI the intelligence put in charge of running the world decides that it needs to uh, curfew imprison or otherwise restrain humanity to save itself from the outside point of view from the dispassionate point of view without thinking about humans I mean that kind of makes sense does is it, that just it is thinking about humans it is it, it, it's it is the best thing in it, their interest i mean would you let your uh kid that's only two years old jump out of an aer- aeroplane with a parachute no and i don't think i'd give him a nuclear code either uh, yeah i mean no, no 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 i'm talking about that you are the ai at that moment yeah yeah well i mean I we thought... are even though we created the ai we are the children Mm-hmm. We're well, not I mean, smart you... enough to take care of ourselves, so we created something that can. Is that the end goal of AI? That that's just kind of hit me in the face there a little bit, actually. Are we actually creating something to look after us? I mean, we obviously want it to take the workload off of us. That that is what we're we're. That, but that's, isn't that th- automatically taking care of us mm, by that's providing the food, by provi- providing air, uh, place to live, satisfactory lives, um, achieving our goals, and basically having a nice and pleasant life. So we have cars to aid us in our travel. Yes. But the car doesn't decide when we walk or not. And I think that there is the line... At least as society stands as I see it right now. I think there is the line of what people find acceptable. It's the difference between help and... So so you're missing a link. I generally miss most links. Please do continue. Cars have been created by humans to aid us in traveling long distance. Yes. This can be very obviously seen in the architecture of American culture during the 21st century. Oh, yes. 20th, 21st century. Yes, yeah, the crazy uh, time where there was more space for cars than there were for humans. Not just that. Uh, 
the distances between residential area and shopping distances is, is you are required to have a car. Mm -hmm. You have no choice but to take the car. Yeah, as a uh, an avid public transport user myself, I I couldn't actually like I, I would have to have a car. That that that's crazy. So, like I've I've made a choice. So because of the infrastructure around me to not. So the car is not directly forcing you to use it or to telling you when you can walk or not. But, but the infrastructure in is. place, infrastructure in place for the car is forcing you. Mm. So that that is a very interesting point because it could also be argued that yes the the infrastructure is forcing you but the people that put the infrastructure in place are actually the ones forcing you you know the council members of 10 years beforehand i'm just going to say the council you know <laughs> but also you are the one who elected the council complain i'm just not saying directly you humans yeah. that live there and complain about that are the ones who elected the council and complained that there's always traffic problems, there's always too, ma too many cars on the road, why can't we have sh uh, bigger streets and all of that. If you want to have bigger streets, you need to move the residential area away to put bigger streets in. in. Yeah, yeah, or, or lose your garden, you know, something or other. So, <laughs> yeah. so there's the problem. Humans make, their, uh, humans make more problems for humans in order to solve problems that are short term uh yeah and and that that is the story of our technological progress if i'm to be completely honest with you we we, we come up with a solution uh let's let's think about leaded petrol you know when petrol <laughs> was first used in cars uh it, you know th there was a terrible was it the knocking issue something like that it was misfiring at the wrong time anyway uh so they very very clever man also uh came up with this beautiful refrigerant um cfc's carbofluorocarbonoids or something like that. i can't remember what the last c stands for sorry about that um so the same guy put lead in our petrol and put cfc's in our atmosphere at the time big thumbs up he he did like amazing things but then later on we realize that there's a big big problem and we have to like fix these things and that is literally how technology works on almost every every step along the way you know at i'm, I'm fairly sure if i if if memory serves correct at the beginning of the 21st century uh we were having terrible terrible issues uh with the addic addictiveness of our uh, technologies people were just uh, staying in front of the technology without realizing uh, how it was kind of hijacking their brain and making them feel good without actually giving them anything in response and you know we, we just need to put other systems in place we had to put other systems in place after that to to fix these issues and that that's that's how life will work life uh, finds a way after immediately messing if, up if we stand there and analyze every single piece of technology and its potential impact on society we wouldn't progress further than fire it's true it's true and we probably wouldn't even do fire because fire bad it hurts yeah um but like most most it's of these analyses these happen after the fact like someone someone will invent, invent something uh it will take the world by storm the world the so the system by storm whatever size um and then some some chemistry student four day four years later it's like actually uh guys we shouldn't have done this <laughs> that's the beauty of human ability to adapt it's also the beauty of how many humans there are there are like uh, not not only are we adaptable but there's always at least one person working on something somewhere you know, if if you can yes. think of a question, someone else has already thought of that question before you and is trying to find the answer. Hmm. Well, yes, and you can look at that as in two ways, where but one is positive and one is negative. The negative one is, uh, if that's the case, why should I do everything, anything else ever again? If someone else is going to do it better. It, yeah. And, and, the, uh, oh, carry on. Other, and the positive one is why shouldn't you do if someone else is doing it it's, Just, it's the classic nihilist uh, nihilist problem right there's no purpose there's no point other people are doing it so what why should i for your own reasons like uh what, what uh, 
There was a great philosopher back in the back in the the times on the YouTubes, uh, and the <laughs> greatest phrasing I ever heard from him: "Happiness is a jumper. You have to knit yourself." Or purpose, but happiness and purpose are, are interchangeable there. Um, so yeah, what? Why should you? For your own reasons, for your own curiosity, for your own wants. Uh, at the 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 collected knowledge of humanity is going to move on, whether you help or not, because um, other people will do so. But don't you want to help that? Well, some people are selfish; they might not want to. But yeah, they might, and that and that's fine. Society can allow for that. Uh, we've got um, enough. We've we've spent the past ten thousand, twenty thousand years trying to make it so that one person can do many people's work. And if that is the case, then why should those other people do anything other than whatever intellectual hedonistic pursuit they can think of? I think the possibility of automating every job and giving full control of an AI that just emerged. Um, so back to the story, should we just, how should we teach the AI? Uh, yeah, how should we teach that AI? Because, so my main, my main thought is like, do we do a human or do we do a teaching robot? Uh, and, and, I I, and I say bot in the classic internet sort of thing, where it's yeah. a, a collection of routines that fire off pre-arranged. I, I, I think it's uh, the answer is human. You but reckon not humans? One. Not what? Not one. All. No. A, all, all. all humans. Oh, I mean that's interesting because as I mean, you would imagine as the super intelligent AI, it could probably talk to more than one one person at once. The internet can talk to everyone at once. Don't give the AI the internet to start with. I would give. No, no. Number one rule: do not give the AI internet. <laughs> I would give the AI internet in order for it to learn quickly. The greatest supply of knowledge humanity has ever created. The most powerful tool humanity has ever made. Rule the thirty-four exists out there. So? Do, you, do you want? Do you want your AI to know that straight away? Um. The documents that contain the cure for cancer is also there. Oh, well, then give them access to the the. Oh, what what's the name of the 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 journal website? There, there, there's this what uh, I know the physicists at least have this one place where they um, put their open source yeah, but journals. Who are you to? S uh, who is stopping you from the internet? At the moment, no one. But at the same time, uh, I don't let my junior charges my nieces nephews or whatever just go on the internet without any safeguards in place you understand they're just gonna do it regardless yes eventually so why is that do part we of the to... oh is that part of the learning process is that what you want your ai to do, do you... to learn to lie to us well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we want AI to be able to lie to us? I mean, if we've not taught it how to... I mean, I, I think knowing the outcome of the future or, uh, like, being able to guess what your actions will cause almost immediately grants you the ability to lie. Because yes. if you can see if your actions are going to cause a bad and you don't want that bad to happen, whatever that bad is, you can say that your actions but are going to be different. The one thing that it needs to learn is that will this be a positive or a negative impact on me? Hmm. Yeah. How how much self preservation I, do you? Want I can lie own? as much as want, but if it's not benefiting me, then there is just being a troll. <laughs> do Do you want to try and make the AI value humans above its own existence, or do you want the AI to value its own existence above everything? Because I, I personally, I myself, value my life above just about everything. I, I, like, I think I would probably, if they were like you or the entire country, I'd be like, all right, I think maybe you can kill me. But yeah, I'm not sure at what point, what, what, like me or another single person. No, you're going to kill them. All right, <laughs> you're going to let me live. <laughs> so I, I don't know whether, whether I want that in an AI or not. I think the... Uh, the, 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 the problem there is if we did teach it that 
there's nothing to stop it from changing its mind. Yeah, that uh, that's always the big thing about these AI questions. So the is problem is, it's, it's an evolving your... person, right? It changes. <laughs> just look at look at children. Perfect example for an AI. Do I have to look at children? They they kind of you don't me out. have to, but yeah, just the existence of children is still there. The, yeah, children still exist. Okay. Um, how many times you tell them sharing is good? Share your toys. Be friendly to others. And then still, they're still gonna grab one toy that they don't want to share. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I There's agree. no way enforcing that rule. You shouldn't enforce that rule. You should just one. If an AI or a child in that case doesn't want to share, don't force anyone to share. <laughs> Nobody's forcing you to share your funds or your uh, life savings. Yeah, this is true. Stop forcing children to share what they, in their mind, earned. Yeah, so like, there's two two edges to this, obviously. Because I, I have a feeling when we're going, like, when we're teaching our kids to share, it's more about social cooperation, doing things that you don't want to do, um, than the actual sharing of the item. So later on, once you've picked up that it's actually more about doing what you don't want to do how to get on with other people if you will uh the sharing isn't so important and that's why we kind of drop it as a as a thing at later on because you've 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 learned to be social if you will yeah but then we are teaching them poorly oh i don't i don't think anyone's gonna disagree that humans are generally subpar at raising other humans <laughs> Informa the, the, we think that information is getting through. It's it it is getting through, but the wrong information yeah. is getting through. Yeah, everything you're trying not to teach them is what's getting through. The, the, the problem is also, for example, the most annoying thing I think about teaching children curse words, and this is only my opinion. Yep. Parents will disagree, but curse words are extremely useful in the day day to day conversations. Expressing feelings, disappointment, expectation, excitement. Yeah, uh, I, I do cut. I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but I actually personally disagree. Um, I, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had this conversation a couple of times before. Lack, lack of vocabulary. <clears throat> I understand that, but you're 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 either trying to make a child not be able to communicate with others normally like completely okay could you imagine that you never learned any curse words and you don't understand when a person tells you a curse word yeah either complimenting you or basically cursing you <laughs> unfortunately with the way in english that some of the curse words are used you, you can't tell whether they're complimenting you or cursing <laughs> It's nuances. <laughs> yes. It, yeah, very it's, much. It's hard to... But that, that's the one important thing to teach. Is, well, it's the nuance of language, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not even... It's, it's just the ability to understand each other and have the ability to express your feelings in a way that it's not going to hurt anyone and everyone will understand. Without using... I agree, you can use other words to express it, but not everyone knows those. Yeah, this, this, this is true. Everyone has been taught those. Even a parent that has all of the good intentions of not actually telling their children curse words and shielding them are not teaching them the substitutes, at least. Yeah, I, the, so the main thing I find that really annoys me about people that try not to use curse words are things like, oh, sugar. Or but <laughs> my own personal favourite that I like to use on on the channel is uh, fudge fudgeicles, <laughs> oh fudgeicles. Yeah. Um, but th that is literally just saying the bad word differently. If you see what I'm saying, uh, it, you you still used that that word, but just not sounding like it. You know. That, so so that, are you now creating a new bad word? Yeah 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 you are the, like uh, what what's the word frig. People say frig all the time, friggin' hell, friggin' this, friggin' that, right? And it's actually become the point where it just means the F word. Yeah. 
I'm sure I could actually say that in episode eight of this podcasty talk, but I'm just going to avoid it for now. <laughs> I mean, there's so many words that people avoid uh, that I'm not going to say here because yeah. one, I'm not supposed to, apparently, according to society, even though it's a perfectly normal word to say, because it's a word. It can't hurt you. It can hurt your feelings. But those are your feelings. That's your opinion. That's your choice of being hurt by it. <laughs> yeah, and, and mostly that is true. But when it comes to uh, both the unknowns that you're trying to impress, job interview, uh, mystery audience, people like this, um, it's one of the quick and easy way. not cursing, I'm saying, is one of the quick and easy ways to show that you know the rules and that you're willing to follow with them. Um which, the problem is, which, in society, shutting up is more acceptable than speaking up for it yourself. Yes, yeah, th th this is actually a problem. I do agree very much with that. And but, if you shut up after being insulted, it's fine, nothing happened, you didn't pick a fight, you're not an aggressive person, you're fine, you're that... That just lowers self-esteem. Mm -hmm. That just puts you deeper in the ground. You just see your friends, your associates, your loved ones, your family, just you're being torn apart piece by piece, put into the ground and let there to die and nobody's speaking up. Yeah. Nobody's saying anything because that's the, what the society expects. Yeah, there's definitely two sides to that though. What, whilst I agree, when it goes that far, very much a bad. Um, but if... It, it's about the person who is being quiet, right? If the person who's being quiet is being is being quiet because they are told to shut up by society, as I think is the the the, the thing you're trying to describe here, then yeah. that's bad. That is very bad. I I agree very much that that's one of these places where society has taught taught us not to say anything so that the more aggressive people get their way. Um, both this and uh, how much money you earn are both the same same subject as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> We're told not to talk to about be honest, them. <laughs> Why? Why? So, two people in a break room, one of a person arrives, says, Hey, how much do you earn? 20th century, 21st century, gets a slap. Yep. Or, or, or even fired. I have or known many people, at least in my country, who have talked about their wages and then either been offered a disciplinary or told to leave. Which, which is I'm just I'm outraged at that. It's like what are, are your paying tactics so underhanded and nasty that you don't want other people knowing what other people are earning? Will, will this cause an uprising? Why aren't why is this unacceptable? It's basically the putting the question. So are you paying everyone equally? Yes. Yeah. Exactly that. Exactly that. And and that is when most of it come like. When, when someone is given a gross misconduct for that, you know it's because they've just found out they're being paid less. It's a hush-hush. It's a taboo. It's basically something that society agreed upon, which mm. is bad. Which is which is not bad. Like the the thing society has agreed is bad, not the uh, not the the action itself. I should definitely be able to ask people what what wage they're earning, not just that, so I can check my employer. All right, transparency is a big thing. I want to be able to check, make sure my employer is not treating people badly. But also, I want to know if I want to transfer a job or something. I think the country that solved that, I think it's n it's either Norway, Sweden, or Denmark. Oh, it's always one, one of, of those. Yeah, yeah, good. One of those. You go to your bank, the website of the bank, type in the, uh, the, secu the, the number of the account that you're looking for, of a person that you know, yeah. their social security number, basically. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you get their f deposits, transactions, and everything. Oh, that's nice. I mean, also, oh. I could see why other people... But, yeah, for, given the point of view we've just said, I am totally behind that. Like, definitely. It's open to the public. The only... Uh, well, they added one other additional thing. If your neighbor does do that for you, you can see and you have a notification that he did check on you. Well, yeah, you'd want to know who's looking. Like, transparency works both ways. That's completely fine. And I'm just saying, so, so basically, I can go and check how much earnings my president have, my mm. uh, my uh, employer has. Yeah, yeah. How much money does he get? Yeah. Is the the company going into down the drain and he's still getting the full pay while I'm being here two months behind pay? Yeah, that's definitely a thing to check there. Wow.
But so, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to wrap it up there, buddy. <laughs> but yeah, we, we've talked about a lot of stuff today. I'd like to thank you very much for taking your break from your rest period to help me with this problem I had. Science officer, thank you very much. You, okay, you, Captain. You may go back to bed now. <laughs> thank you. And with that, Captain's Log, signing off.